Hi ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls! I know that you are waiting for Slavic mythology, but not covering this legend is a crime. This legend is so cool. It has epic lore, Christian and pagan elements in one story, and wonderful main character, Saint Fivronia of Murom. Disclaimer, this isn't 100% historically accurate story. It was recorded in 16th century by Mork Yermolai based on folk tales. This story is great chunk of folklore, even if those historical figures and events took place at some point. Are you ready to discover the story of the life of Saint Peter and Fevronia of Muram? This legend begins with Knyaz, which is ancient aristocratic title equal to prince, of city Muram, Pyotr, won in the battle against fire serpent, and the serpent's blood started to cause deadly skin disease. By the way, Pyotr is a younger brother of current ruler of city Murom, Pavel. They started to look for a doctor everywhere, but no one was able to help. No one, except one young lady Fevronia. A peasant woman Fevronia lived in a village in Rizan area. She is a daughter of a wild honey miner, a herbalist, and was known in her local community as a healer. She agreed to help Pyotr, if he marries her, because she didn't find appropriate to perform this healing ritual to someone who is not close related to her. Pyotr was surprised. He decided to test her and offered to make a cloth from a small bunch of flags. With the face like nothing happened, Fivronia gave him a small piece of wood for him to make her a loom. Pyotr realized that his request did not make sense. Who would imagine that? and promised to marry her. Fivronia gave him bread leaven, blew on it, and told Pyotr to go to the banya, which is home sauna, and even lower class people had it in the household, in ancient Rus, which is a country that existed on the current territory of Russia, Ukraine and Belarus. Fivronia decided to leave a guarantee that Pyotr actually going to marry her. She told Knyaz to wash himself and lubricate all the scrubs with bread leaven, except one. Healed and healthy Pyotr suddenly had to come back to Murom for business. He would disappear, but with one scrub missing, healing had temporary effect. Yes, you got it right, Pyotr had to come back. So sorry, was so busy, totally forgot, the past is past, da da, understand. Since Pivronia was the only person who is able to heal the disease, Pyotr was motivated to keep his promise. I mean, she is beautiful, smart, and skilled in medicine. What else do you need? Ungrateful. Pyotr and Fevronia went to Muram and got married there. This is where hardship started to take place. Because you know, when someone suddenly upgrades their social status, people will never forgive that. After Pavel passed away, his younger brother Pyotr inherited the throne, and the tension increased since. Fevronia didn't flex. She decided to tell as little as possible how well she is doing. And boy did it help. No, it didn't. Local elites hated her so much that one day they came to her and offered her money or anything just for her to leave the city. Ironically, when they offered her anything, she chose her husband Pyotr. Basically she said, give me my husband and I'm going to leave the city. When Pyotr himself found out about this interesting offer, he and Fevronia left Muram, leaving power to local elites. What can we do? The heart chooses. Fevronia and Pyotr peacefully traveled in a boat in the river Oka, while city Muram burned from political fights over the throne. Those elites couldn't reach the agreement and started to get rid of each other. All of them wanted to be князь now. Pyotr panicked because the situation is crazy. On another hand, Fevronia trusted her intuition, and no matter what, stayed positive. She took a couple of thin twigs on the river shore, prayed, and over the night they grew into beautiful trees. It is considered another miracle that Fevronia did. The next day a messenger from Murom elite came begging the couple to come back. Now elites wanted the peace that they had when Pyotr was a ruler. The couple returned to the city and lived happily ever after. At their senior years, the couple became monks, and during their life in the monastery, they made a statement that they want their bodies to be put in one coffin. They even prepared this coffin. But who cares? 
Peter and Fevronia passed away at the same time and were buried separately. The next day, their bodies were found laying next to each other in one coffin. And it is considered a miracle, by the way. That is creepy enough, but wasn't creepy enough for those who decided to separate the couple again. This Walking Dead show continued for three times, until Peter and Fevronia got buried together as they asked. Finally happy end? I think so. 25th of June is the day of this couple in old-style orthodox calendar. July 8th is the celebration of the Holy Prince Peter and Princess Fevronia of Murom in the new style orthodox calendar. Also, July 8th is the day of family love and loyalty in Russia, and Saint Peter and Saint Fevronia, orthodox patrons of family, are symbols of this holiday. If you didn't notice, Russians have a sense of humor. 64 sculptures dedicated to this couple located in Russia. 64! I showed only a few of them in the video. Think about that. By the way, you might notice a rabbit at some sculptures. It is a part of the tale. The scene is when Peter's servants search for a healer. The servant, who was at the Fevronia's location, walked into her house and saw her with a dancing rabbit. When Fevronia saw a stranger, she complained. I wish I had a dog to inform me that there is a stranger coming. She said, a rabbit in a pagan Slavic belief is associated with love and marriage cult. Not implying anything. See how much good things happen when a woman takes the initiative. Or Be like Fevronia. Take the initiative in your hands. I'm Yekaterina Pavlova, and what do you think about today's lessons from Orthodox Saint? Leave a comment below and subscribe to see more episodes. Bye!